Um, thank you very much, Mara Jean, for the introduction, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present uh, some findings of our recent study on how we soften pancreatic cancer to improve chemotherapy response. So pancreatic cancer develops from the pancreas, and uh, it's one of the most lethal cancer types. In Australia, only one out of 10 patients is still alive five years after diagnosis. Pancreatic cancer is the third most common cause of cancer-related death and is estimated to become the second most common cause in 2030. 80 to 90% of patients are not eligible for surgery and therefore have to rely on drug therapy. The standard of care drug therapy or treatment is chemotherapy. And uh, although we recently saw an addition of abraxan chemotherapy to standard of care gemcitabine chemotherapy, um, this has only increased patient survival from about 6.7 months to 8.5 months, indicating that we really um, have to find new treatment opportunities for pancreatic cancer patients. So as pancreatic cancer progresses, not only do the cancer cells grow, but also the environment in which these cancer cells live changes. So that is something that Michelle has already touched upon before. So we basically look at these dark lines here, which we call extracellular matrix. And over disease progression, this extracellular matrix becomes more dense uh, and stiff, making these pancreatic tumors incredibly stiff. And what we know is that this stiff environment in which pancreatic cancer cells live um, helps them actually to spread throughout the body, for example, to metastasize to the liver. But this stiff environment also acts as a barrier or shield to any kind of treatment. And this is one of the reasons why chemotherapy in pancreatic cancer is not performing that well. We can see that uh, also here in these histological sections of a normal pancreas and um, different sections of pancreatic cancer throughout disease progression, where you can see this extracellular matrix it's in red, and you can see that it accumulates and becomes very dense as the tumors progress. Um, and so when we zoom into these pancreatic tumors, what we find is that these cancer cells, the pancreatic cancer cells, they really interact with the extracellular matrix. And we know that they do it via a molecule called focal adhesion kinase, or FAK. And so what we wanted to do in our study is to target this molecule, focal adhesion kinase, with a drug um, to interrupt the interaction between cancer cells and the environment, and thereby hopefully improve response to chemotherapy. Um, and so in collaboration with um, Marina Pajik from the Garvin Institute and the Australian Pancreatic Genome Initiative, uh, we looked at pancreatic cancer patients and wanted to understand how much of this molecule FAK pancreatic cancer patients have. We basically found that there's a range, um, that there's a, quite a heterogeneity in these amounts of FAK we find in pancreatic cancer patients. So here you can, for example, see an, ex an example of a pancreatic tumor with high FAK indicated by this brown staining compared to tumor that has low FAK. And so when we now look what this means in terms of the outcome for pancreatic cancer patients, we find that the patients with high FAK um, um, survive significantly shorter than the patients with low FAK. And so we want to do something for this patient group that does particularly poorly and has high um, FAK in their pancreatic tumors. And so um, we basically uh, use microscopies similar to Michelle um, to look at pancreatic cancer response to drug treatment and to optimize our drug treatment in live pancreatic tumors in the very tissue that we want to target. So we have very uh, sophisticated microscopy setups. We even have a dedicated um, microscopy room, which you can see here in the basement of the Garvin Institute, who basically look at the live pancreatic tumors, how they respond to drug treatment, and how we can improve this response. Here you can see an example, for example, here it's cells in green interacting with the extracellular matrix in magenta, and you can really see how the cells use these magenta fibers to move forward and exploit them. We can also look at, for example, the vasculature here in red, so we can understand how the blood vessels perfuse the pancreatic tumors, apologies. Um, 
uh, and look at the structure and patency of these blood vessels that actually deliver drugs into the tumor. And so what we did for our study is we looked at um, established pancreatic tumors and treated our models for three days with focal adhesion kinase inhibitor, uh, followed by two days of chemotherapy. When we now look at the extracellular matrix, what we find is when we treat our models only with chemotherapy, we see a lot of extracellular matrix here, which we also call fibrosis in magenta. However, in our combination therapy, we now see that this extracellular matrix is markedly reduced, indicating that we potentially remove this environment from the cancer cells. Um, when we now want to understand how the cancer cells respond to chemotherapy, and we use a little trick for that called a biosensor um, to basically understand how the cells respond to chemotherapy. And so we can monitor with this biosensor how cells are going through this, what we call the cell cycle to divide and grow. And you can see here in red, in normal setting, um, we can see a lot of red cells indicating cells are dividing and the pancreatic tumors are growing. And so what we want to see is that when we target the tumors with chemotherapy, we want to see a shift to green cells, which indicates that we arrest the cells in this cycle, we stop them from dividing and we uh, reduce pancreatic tumor growth. And so we did this little trick in our treated tumors and what we found was that when we uh, looked only at chemotherapy treatment, we saw that there was still a lot of red cells in the tumors indicating the cells were still dividing Whereas when we looked at our combination therapy, the focal tissue kinase inhibitor prior to chemotherapy, we saw now a significant shift towards green cells, indicating that we can um, stop the cells from dividing and um, arrest pancreatic tumor growth, slow it down. Importantly, these findings were in the primary tumors, but we can also look at um, secondary sites of pancreatic cancer, so sites where the pancreatic cancer has spread to other parts of the body. You might remember that I mentioned the liver before, so we looked at uh, liver metastasis. And what we found was in the live liver metastasis, when we treated only with chemotherapy, we saw that there were lots of red cells, again, indicating that these metastases are actively growing. Whereas in our combination approach, we see very small metastases, and they're mostly green, indicating that also at these secondary sites, we have arrested the pancreatic cancer. To further understand how this, our approach basically works and how we um, make our pancreatic cancer cells respond better to chemotherapy. We wanted to understand whether it's the softening of the environment around the pancreatic cancer, which would be key um, to the improved response in chemotherapy. So we took our pancreatic cancer cells and put them into a culture dish. And um, we put them either on a, soft, on, a, on, a, on a stiff surface or on a soft surface. And then we looked again at how the cancer cells are dividing. What we find is that on the, on the stiff surfaces, we see a lot of red cells indicating the cells are dividing, whereas on the soft surfaces, we see a lot of green cells indicating we've arrested the cells. So it seems that really the softening of the environment by our FAK inhibitor is key to improving the, the response to chemotherapy and pancreatic cancer. We then, in order to translate our approach uh, to pancreatic cancer patients, took an intermediate step where we looked at established patient models in collaboration again with Marina Pajic and the Australian Pancreatic Genome Initiative at the Darwin Institute. And so we basically identified patients that are low for focal adhesion kinase or FAK versus patients that are high for focal adhesion kinase or FAK. And so the idea is that patients who are low for FAK would not really benefit from our approach. And you can see this here, um, which we call FAK insensitive, we can see that um, upon our combination therapy approach, there's no significant improvement in uh, survival in our patient model compared to the chemotherapy alone. However, when we look at the high FAK patients that have the poorest outcome also, we now see that there's a significant improvement in survival in this patient model in the combination therapy compared to the chemotherapy alone. Importantly, when we look at metastasis, uh, time to metastasis, we see that surprisingly in our FAK insensitive model, we do see a subtle increase un of time until the cancer spreads to other sides of the body compared to chemotherapy alone. Um, and in our FAK sensitive model, um, we now see a, a huge benefit in terms of time to metastasis for the combination therapy, showing that those models that lived longest um, 
in those models that lived longest, only 50% of these models actually displayed metastases compared to chemotherapy alone. Um, and so basically, I hope I could show you today that uh, the utility of uh, using microscopy to, to look at live drug treatment response in the live tumors, how we combine that with our patient models of pancreatic cancer, um, also trying to identify those patient models that uh, benefit the most from, from our combination therapy approach. And so we are really excited now um, to translate these findings into the clinics. So um, our preclinical uh, study has basically uh, gained the interest from uh, the Melbourne-based company Amplia Therapeutics. We're collaborating with them on their novel focal adhesion kinase inhibitor that they want to put forward for phase two uh, testing in actual pancreatic cancer patients in the clinic in early 2022. So I'd just like to uh, thank uh, everybody involved in the project. I would especially highlight, like to highlight our funding agencies and also thank a lot of our philanthropic support without whom uh, this work would not have been possible. Thank you very much for your attention.